It is also happening in other countries in our neighborhood. In 2006, I brought to your urgent attention the attempts may, being made to annex Abkhazia and South Ossetia. And I asked you then, would any member in this great hall tolerate such interference by another power on their own soil? I warned about the risk that, and I quote, the Pandora's box of violent separatists and conflict will be unleashed not only in the Caucasus, but across many parts of our globe. Today, unfortunately, we stand at this very precipice where the peace could yield to the pernicious new world order. One year ago, I came to this hall with even more distressing news on, of an illegal new military base being built in South Ossetia by those who hoped that arms and violence could triumph over the will of the people. I noted that this dangerous escalation was taking place under the very nose of international monitors whose job it was to demilitarize the territory. And I asked that these reckless acts be countered. Well, our warnings continued in the months and weeks before the invasion. We told everyone who want, would listen of the campaign that had been unleashed to slander Georgia and my government while blocking any meaningful negotiations with the separatists. This was part of a calculated effort to weaken international support for Georgia and to lay groundwork for invasion. We gave the international community details of a sharp military buildup by the purported peacekeepers that began this spring in both conflict zones, leading to armed attacks this summer by separatist militias. Just before the land invasion began, began in the early hours of August 7, after days of heavy shelling and killing of civilians and peacekeepers, we urgently sought to refute claims that 2,100 South Ossetian civilians had been killed by Georgians. This was the excuse used by the invader for what I called a humanitarian, for they called humanitarian intervention, a profound perversion of the responsibility to protect. These lies, subsequently debunked by Human Rights Watch, which estimated 44 dead and others was an attempt to conceal the true motives for the invasion. Over the years, it all, I also have spoken many times to you of the plans Georgia has developed together with the international community to peacefully reunify my country. I talked of the urgent need to replace and transform the failed frameworks of negotiation and peacekeeping in our regions. I have held out repeatedly and with genuine intent my head to our big neighbor. And just a few days before the invasion of Georgia, we continue to work furiously for peace. The United Nations Secretary General had, spent his special, had sent his special representative to Georgia to determine how to fix the broken process of conflict resolution, and we cooperated closely with him. The German government had proposed peace talks for mid-August, talks my government eagerly supported. The Finnish chair of the OSCE proposed talks in Helsinki as well as in late July, to which we subscribed. Unfortunately, the counterparties to the conflict turned their backs repeatedly. They had other plans in mind. Finally, on the eve of the invasion, my special envoy traveled in desperation twice to South Ossetia to plead for peace. His counterpart from our neighbor country failed to come to the meeting. He called a flat tire as the reason for not showing up. Within 24 hours, thousands of very full tires were rolling over my border of my country. So words alone are not nearly enough, nor can words accurately convey the horrors of war. It is difficult, if not impossible, even to say that anything good could come of war. The value of human right life is incalculable, and we in Georgia grieve not only for our own lost sons and daughters, but also for our fallen neighbors that were sent in for unjust aggression and war. Yet the international community has emerged from this invasion of my country with some truly valuable. Finally, the clarity. We understand what has happened. We no longer can deny the motivations and the intentions of those actions who, actors who instigated the war. With clarity comes responsibility. We no longer have reason for inaction. So now each of us has a responsibility to act. Despite the destruction created by the invasion, 
hundreds dead, dead, nearly 200,000 people displaced, according to the UN, our economy disabled, my government is putting our convictions into practice. I promise to you that my government will implement with all the due speed the new democratic initiatives that, I, that constitute the second Rose Revolution. I promise to you that Georgia will soon be stronger and more democratic than ever before and thus be in a better position to contribute to our collective security and prosperity. But for this to have any meaning, we must together defend the principles on which this institution is built. We need actions, not words. Allow me once again repeat the four commitments that I believe we must make. First, we must each refuse to stand silent in the face of this armed aggression, occupation, ethnic cleansing, and the assault on a UN member state. Second, we must stand united in rejecting the force and illegal recognition of Georgia's two separatist promises and basically annexation by the neighbor. Third, we must ensure that all parties comply fully with the existing ceasefire agreement. And fourth, we must resolve to create a meaningful conflict resolution process that will peacefully reunify Georgia and solve the conflicts in the interest of all ethnic groups, minorities, and the society as a whole and the region. If we can accomplish these goals, then this institution will emerge from this crisis stronger than it was before. If, however, we fail to accomplish and uh, to stop these violent tactics that subvert state sovereignty in Georgia, it will spread to other parts of the world. It is our collective responsibility to respond with conviction and resolve. Georgia has made a choice of our democracy will emerge stronger as a result. Together, we will find ways, as we have through the millennia, to ensure peaceful coexistence between all members of our multi-ethnic society, be they ethnically Georgian, ethnically Abkhaz, ethnically Ossetian. We are an ancient Christian country for many, many, many centuries, since 15th century, but we are also a country of coexistence of all different religious groups, of all different communities, and diversity is our strength. It's not source of our weakness, and we are willing to strengthen it even further. And to make my country successful, to make my country whole, rebuilt, and rejuvenated once again. Thank you very much for your attention.